Thank you so much. That was the song that my wife and I sang on our wedding day. Seekers of your heart. Happy Sabbath, everybody. And to our mothers, all the biological, all the adoptive, all the spiritual mothers, happy Mother's Day one day in advance. It's amazing how the Bible expresses some of the deepest realities of God using the picture of uh, a hen or a chicken covering her little chicken under her wings. And that's a beautiful picture of God conveyed through our mothers. Thank you so much for loving on us, for nourishing us, for nurturing us, for being there for us children that sometimes can even be reckless. Thank you. There are two words in the English language that sound and look similar. One is chief and the other one is chef. Chief and chef. If you go and uh, explore the etymology of those words, you will find that both of these words come from the French language because in French, chef means both. Both chief, as in uh, CEO, chief executive officer, or CFO, or COO, and chef, as in uh, the king of the kitchen, the chief of the kitchen. If you go even deeper, you will find that at the root of those words, there is a word in the Latin language, capum, and a word in the Greek language, kephale, which mean head. And from that word in the Greek, kephale, you have cephalopod. Do you know what a cephalopod is? That is an animal that has the feet, because that's pod in uh, Greek, the feet, the, the feet are attached directly to the head. And uh, we call them tentacles. Can you give me an animal like that? The octopus, that's a cephalopod, yes? Cephalos, or kephale, chief, that's how they connect. Now, when I say head, in your imagination, most of you, you will see something attached to a torso, usually as a unique reality, a singular reality. There's also a phenomenon called uh, polycephaly, which uh, means that a body has more than one head. And that can happen in mythology. You may know that in mythology there are all kinds of animals that have multiple heads. Or it can happen in fiction, even in symbolism, because in the Bible you have symbols, like the dragon or the beast, that have multiple heads. In real life, that only appears as a congenital disorder when uh, in a monozygotic conception, two different human beings are somehow joined together, and we call that conjoined twins. 
But that's a very rare phenomenon, both in humans and in animals. Usually, when it comes to one body, to one body belongs how many heads? One head. And how many bodies belong to one head? One body. Now, let me ask you something. How many heads does the church have? One. Who is the head of the church? Who is the head of the Laguna Negel Seventh-day Adventist Church? Do you believe that? Let's pray. Lord, yes, we, we want to believe that. May your spirit convince us. Amen. Last time I preached from Paul's prayer for the believers in Ephesus. A prayer in which he says, I pray that the eyes of your what? Heart will be enlightened and you will be able to see. See what? And in Ephesians chapter 1, starting with verse 18, we have what that means. I would need the Bible passage up on the screen. That you may know, you may know what? What the hope of his calling is, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints are, what are those riches? And then verse 19 says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? And if you look at those words in Greek, please go back to the previous verse. Yes, those words in Greek, dynamis, energeia, kratos, and iskus, all of those words mean the same thing, actually. It's power. So if I am to rephrase what Paul says, because that's a play on words, this is what it says. I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened so that you will see or you will know the exceeding greatness of his power according to the power of the power of his power and you may think, what kind of power is that? And Paul explains, what kind of power is that? Verse 20. Which, which power? He worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So that power raised Jesus Christ from the dead, seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. The power led to a position. Not only that, verse 21. For above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in the age, but also in that which is to come. So here we are dealing not only with power leading to position, we are, leading, we are dealing with a power leading to the highest position, a preeminence. The preeminent position of Jesus Christ, verse 22 and he put all, all things under his feet and gave him to be head. And that's where the word kephale appears. That's the word from which chief and chef come. Kephale. To be head over all. To whom? To the church. So that's the purpose 
of God's power, God's resurrection power, resurrecting Jesus Christ, elevating Him, seating Him at the right hand of God, giving Him that position, which is the most preeminent position in all positions, with a purpose. What is the purpose? The purpose is that He would be head over all to the church. If He's head over all to the church, can the church have any other head? And verse 23 goes on saying, which is His body. Oh, the church is His body. He's the head of that body, the sole and unique head of that body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all, and that has to do with the performance. What does that head do? As the performance of the head of the body, of Christ being the head of the church, He fills all in all. Now, in a different language, after his resurrection, Jesus came to the disciples and said, All authority, Matthew 28, verse 18, all authority has been given to me, where? In heaven and on earth. If all authority has been given to Jesus Christ in heaven and on earth, how much authority is outside of his own authority. Do you believe that? All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Does that apply to the church as well? Yes, it does apply because we just saw what Paul says, that he was given to be head of the church and head over all or all things in the church. And uh, he's the one that feels all in all. What does that mean? Well, that means that since he's the sole and unique head, all authority is owned by the head. All authority is owned by the head. Authority is only loaned to the body, to the body in general, or in particular to the parts of the body. And if all authority belongs to Jesus Christ outside of the church and in the church, that means that whenever he loans the authority that he owns, he loans that authority for what purpose? What does the body in its connection to the head? Well, the body carries out the will of the head. Is that correct? Why do we need to emphasize this? Because in the church, there's always a competition. There's a risk there is a temptation almost for some to try to become the head of the church and take the position, the preeminent position of the one that is the sole and unique head of the church. And that is a very dangerous enterprise. We have to emphasize this because there is a danger, not necessarily for Jesus Christ to be replaced as the head of the church. Because few people, few Christians even, have gotten to the conclusion that Jesus Christ is replaceable. But we have found ways in which we try to share in being the head of the church. Meaning we tend toward a polycephalous reality for the church, where the body does have Christ as the head of the body of the church, but next to Jesus Christ, or maybe in some sort of relationship to Jesus Christ, there is another head. And that 
pretty much creates confusion in the body because then you look and uh, you try to see where the authority is coming from and to whom to listen. Let me illustrate that. The church cannot have two heads. The sole and unique head of the church is Christ Jesus. The church cannot have Christ and the president as heads. Well, you may think, does that even exist? Well, listen, I have written a dissertation for my MPA degree on how the words God, religion, church, Bible, faith, and other related concepts are used in political campaigns, in presidential campaigns. And doing my research, I stumbled upon two conce concepts. One is the politicization of religion, and the other one is the religionization of politics. So what is going on? Well, it seems that even in Christianity, some people have come to the conclusion that yes, Christ is the head of the church, but next to Christ, we can have one more head. And it happened to me to listen to preachers, preachers in the pulpit, that were bringing the message allegedly from the head Jesus Christ, but actually they were proposing and moving people up to the, the agenda of the president. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter which president, which party it belongs to, or he belongs to, or she belongs to. You cannot have Christ and the president as a head. So you have to drop one of these heads. Which one are you going to drop? You sure? Oh my, let, me, let me bring one, one closer, because this is, this is about society by and large. This is a crazy reality. It's not only in America, it's all over the world now. Politicization of religion and religionization of politics. Let me bring it closer. The church cannot have two heads. One head, Christ Jesus, and the other head, Ellen G. White. <clears throat> yes, Ellen G. White is a prophetic voice in Seventh-day Adventism. Yes, she is a pioneer. Yes, some say she is one of the founders of the church. Uh, there I have a problem. But some definitely act as if Christ Jesus, along with Ellen G. White, were the heads of the church. And when they cannot find something in the Bible to prove their fixed and preconceived ideas, they will go to Ellen G. White writings, search frantically, find something, and use that something taken out of context, neglecting everything around, and use that as an unbeatable argument, setting the agenda for the church, and treating her as not the head, but one of the heads of the church. You have to drop one of these heads. Which one are you going to drop? I know it was easy when it came to the president. Well, 
somewhat easier. Can you drop this one and stay with Jesus Christ? The head? You are thoughtful now. We don't know what's next. Well, you cannot have Christ Jesus and the Pope as the head of the church. You cannot. Christ is the sole and unique head of the church. You may think, Pastor, we are Seventh-day Adventists here. We don't believe in the in persona Christi capitis teaching, which means in the person of Christ, the head. We don't believe in that. Yes, there is a certain religious institution which believes that this is what the right connection of authority is. You have Christ as the head, but he is invisible. So then you have the Pope, because Christ is invisible. And every priest in the church is practically in persona Christi Capitis. And depends more on this, the Pope, than on this, Christ Jesus. Because the Pope has the authority to even change what Christ Jesus said, but the priest doesn't have the authority to change what the Pope said. All right, you may think, uh, Pastor, you again are somewhere else. This is not us. No, I'm speaking to Seventh-day Adventists. I have seen Seventh-day Adventists following the Pope wherever he goes. I know the Bible says the 144,000 follow the Pope wherever he goes. No, 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 no. Follow who? Ah, okay. But I've seen 70 Adventists who have been following the Pope wherever he goes, setting the agenda to the church based on the moves of the Pope they predict things that should happen, and when those things never happen, they forget to come back and apologize and say, hey, you were wrong. Please, we cannot have as head of the church Christ and the Pope in any way. One is enough, two is too many. But now, we cannot have Christ and the GC president. You may know that uh, after two years of being postponed, this year, between June the 6th and June the 11th, in St. Louis, Missouri, we will have the 61st GC session, General Conference session. I've been following some conversations in which I've seen that, according to some, the most important thing to happen at the 61st GC session is to elect or re-elect the head of the church. No, 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 no. If Christ is the sole head of the church, everybody else is the body. So the best thing possibly that the GC session can do is to temporarily assign responsibilities to parts of the body, not to the head, and not elect the head. So if in anybody's mind there was this hierarchical picture that you can have the church, Jesus Christ, 
as head and the GC president? No, you have to drop one of them from the head position. From the body position? Yes, there's a role there as well. Yes, uh, when it comes to carrying out the desires of the head, Jesus Christ, yes, there is a role there as well. But everybody in the church, including the GC president, is part of the body according to the Bible, and Jesus Christ is a sole and unique head. Amen? Amen. Okay, let me bring it uh, closer to us now. But let me first drop it and then take another illustration. I asked you at the beginning who the head of the Laguna Niguel Seventh day Adventist Church was. Who's that? Christ, I feel so relieved. <laughs> I'm serious. I am relieved. Because, you know, there are multiple pastors serving this congregation. We have Pastor Tania focusing on youth and young adults. We have Pastor Lynette focusing on children and family. We have Pastor Marco who focuses on the Hispanic ministry. We have Pastor Joe focusing on visioning, leadership, feeding the church, preaching stuff that some like and some don't. But I sometimes hear, Pastor, you are the head here. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. When I came for an interview, that position had been taken already. Yeah, Jesus Christ is supposed to be the head. Yeah, but pastor, aren't you the CEO of this church? No, no, no. Not even the chef, let alone the chief. Because even the chef that brings the word of God, the food, the spiritual food, has to bring his food, not his own food. Whether, whether the people sitting in the restaurant would like it or not, it's his food. But this is not corporate America here. This is Christ's church. And if there's anything if there's anybody that can possibly serve as a CEO, that's him. That's not me. And thank God, the position, well, even that word is wrong. The office that I serve in is not head pastor. It is, what, lead or senior pastor, which can be different. You know why? Because the head is above. The lead is not above. The lead is in front. And the head is still above. Does that make sense? Let me illustrate that from the Bible itself. First Peter chapter 5. From verse 1. And please notice how the job of a pastor and the job of an elder in the church is practically the same job. If I'm the lead pastor, I'm supposed to lead a group of pastors called pastors and elders. You know that historically, pastors were also called elders. Still today, but very limited. You know why? Because of this. Look what Peter says. The elders who are among you, I exhort. And the, the word exhortation is not a word that acts from above down like that. It's not, I tell you, you must do this what he says, you shall do this, or you should 
do this. Not you must do it. That's the difference between a CEO and a pastor. A CEO can say, you must do this or else. A pastor cannot say that. A pastor has to say, you should do this or else. The head, not the pastor. The elder who are among you, I exhort, parakalo in Greek. If anybody knows a little Greek here, you know that even today in Greek, when you say please, you say parakalo, please. Parakalo, please. I who am a fellow elder. Oh, so Peter the Apostle that would walk around and uh, lay the foundations of some churches and, and teach everybody a fellow elder. Can you notice how the leadership structure here is not hierarchical, but it's flat? I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed, verse 2, verse 2, shepherd the flock of God which is among you. Yes, the elders of the church are shepherds as well. The difference between pastors and elders is that pastors serve the whole church. The elders serve the local church. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers. Just oversee. Not overpower. Not by compulsion, but willingly. Not, by, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. And now it explains, verse 3, what that means. Nor as being lords over, see the language? When you have somebody in the church as being head, that person is over or above and can lord over. No, no, no. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you. Entrusted by whom? Who's the head? Christ the head. But being examples to the flock. Where is an example? Is the example above or in front of the flock? Hmm? When you see a flock and you see the shepherd, where is the shepherd? Hovering from above? What is the picture then? Is it hierarchy or flat? It's flat. We are placed in front of one another, not above one another, but even deeper than that, we are placed in a flat structure based on mutual submission, the Bible teaches. Being examples to the flock. Why? Verse 4. And when the chief... Ah, this is why I don't have the office of head pastor. Because the chief pastor is not me. The chief shepherd, who's that? Appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. So please, brothers and sisters, if by any chance you thought Pastor Joe is the head of this church, drop him. Don't take him back. If you thought he's the CEO, drop him. No, it's him. Pastor Joe, just like anybody else, is part of the body looking at the chief because he is above and standing by grace in front of the flock, trying to give direction not by must, but rather by should. And whenever I fail in that responsibility, don't blame God for that. Come to me and speak to me. If you think the pastor is weak, let him know. But if you think the pastor is weak because God didn't give his authority to be the head to him, then speak 
to the Lord. Because yes, I know I have authority, but my authority is not owned. My authority is only loaned. And that is different. And let me bring another picture. Just for clarification, we have in our list of servant leaders in the church a few offices that have the word head in it. Head elder, head deacon, head deaconess, head of the department. If it was me, I wish the manual had a different name, maybe a lead, maybe some sort of uh, organizer for eliminating the confusion. Why? Because the text says, remember, he feels all in all. He is the head. Now, I know the manual uses those titles. Actually, just as an interesting fact, the office of the head elder officially is called first elder, which probably is a better rendering. But still, the other offices are used with head. You know the manual is also perfectible. It's not perfect. It can be worked on. But in any case, those heads are heads of those respective groups. And if there's any way to put it the right way, is not lording from above, it is leading out like a shepherd leads the flock, giving yourself as an example to the flock. Because just like in the case of the lead pastor, we cannot have Christ and the lead pastor as different heads. We cannot have Christ and any of the other offices with the word head in as the heads of the church. Because the sole and unique head of the church is Christ Jesus. We have to drop the other heads. Well, you may think, well, then, then the church board. The church board, yeah, they are the head, I know. They decide, they know. They... No, the reason we work in committees in the church is exactly to avoid a situation where somebody would run up the ladder to become the head. No, we work through committees. And the committee is not the head, it's the body. It's a representation of the body. When we sit together in a committee, we all look at the head. Not at Pastor Joe. If you are sitting on a board meeting where Pastor Joe is the chair facilitating the meeting. And you look at Pastor Joe instead of looking up. Not the right thing. Because Pastor Joe, just like you and you and you, any of the elders and leaders of this church, we are supposed to be looking at the head, Jesus Christ. Because he has authority owned. Us, only authority Loaned. And you may think, well, you're speaking about so many things now. Have you missed anybody? Well, to make sure I don't miss anybody, I have a bonus. The church cannot have Christ Jesus as head and you. whoever you are. Because there's always people that think, hey, I'm not in leadership. Ah, no. No. By the biblical teaching of uh, universal priesthood, the priesthood of all believers, you have authority too. Yes, you, as a child of God, you do have authority. God-given authority. Plus, in the church, 
There are, are always people that are influential in any kind of way that are not officially in leadership. And they develop a following as well, sometimes. And that's all fine to a certain degree. It becomes a problem when we have two heads, Christ and someone else, be it an influential leader or a drama queen. I checked to see if this language is uh, misogynistic, and I got to know that drama queen can refer to both men and female. <laughs> but this is a reality, not here. I've never seen it here. In some remote places, in a different age, yes, there are drama queens, and they develop a following in the church as well. Not a problem to a certain degree, as long as we don't have this competition. When we have a competition between Christ Jesus and anybody else, you have to drop somebody. And watch this. You saw me dropping this and not this. Because I want to stick with the head, the genuine head. But believe me, instead of doing this, it's much better to drop this and stay with this. Have you understood what I'm saying? Instead of having two heads, it's better to drop this head and keep this head. Now, I know this is confusing. Let me explain to you. Suppose I'm the sole head of the Laguna Niguel Seventh-day Adventist Church, just for a moment. Just reason with me. If I'm the sole head, then whatever crosses my mind, whatever sticks in my mind, whatever fixed idea I have, I will impose it on you. Because I'm the head. And that's an abuse. But there is an abuse even greater than that. The abuse that is greater than that is when I am the head and Christ is the head and I act as if I am submitted to the head when in fact I will impose my own things, my own ideas with religious conviction in the name of the head, in the name of Jesus Christ, treating you, mistreating you, using you, abusing you in the name of the head as if it was the head's desire for me to do that. And that's Christianity over the centuries. Because when you do that, when I do that, I become a monster. And Christianity, the history of Christianity is full of monstrosities. Have you ever seen your atheists or non-Christian friends, what they say regarding Christianity? For, let, me, let me just mention one or two or three. Crusades. Who was the head? They entered in that church and they said, Kill everybody. Let God pick his own. That was Christians. Or think about uh, the Inquisition. Who was the head when they tortured innocent people, asking them to recant? Who was the head? Was it Christ? Did they say it's not Christ, it's us? No, it was Christ and them. And that made it worse than any political system. The most abusive power in the Bible is not a political system. It's a religious system riding a political power. Yeah, that's it. Think about the colonial exploitation. Think about slavery. Who was the head? Who was the head? 
See what the struggle is? What kind of head is Jesus Christ? Well, verses 22 and 23 again, just to bring it together. And he put all things under his feet, God under Christ's feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. In corporate America, the role of the leader is to bring out the best from somebody. In the church, Christ the head fills people up so they will be capable. And then, after filling them up, he brings out their best. I was thinking, what would be a good contemporary picture of what it means, Christ the head, and show where the place of leadership is. And by the way, I value and appreciate the work of our leadership here. I really want, to, want you to know that I do respect and appreciate leadership in the church. So how, how can we illustrate the relationship between God the head leadership in the church, which is part of the body, and the body by and large. And it, it came to me, I think the Lord put it in my mind, this picture of uh, an orchestra director, or conductor. Do you know how they call it in French? Chef d'orchestre. It's the same chief, chef, chef word from kefale. Question for you. For an orchestra to be filled up and sound the right way. What is needed? A conductor, with what does the conductor lead? With what? The hands, right? Yes and no. Because the most important aspect of the conductor is the head. You can go on YouTube and look for conducting without hands, and you will see Famous conductors, Leonard Bernstein, for instance, conducting with his hands back and only with his head. Now, do they conduct without hands? No, most of the time they use their hands. Does Jesus Christ conduct us to sound good as a church without using the hands? No, he uses the hands. The hands are local leadership or leadership at the wider levels of the church. I said wider, not higher, wider. But for some reason, the good Lord said, for conducting, I will use hands as well. But the hands, for God's music to come out, have to really follow the head because that's the only way we can bring out the music that is in his head. Amen? Amen. Amen.